This video is sponsored by Friendly TV. With over 40 channels, many of them showing your favorite classic TV shows, Friendly TV is the low-cost streaming service for those of us who remember when television was truly special. I've added a link to Friendly TV in the description section of this video. When you use it to try it out free for 7 days, you will also be supporting this channel. Way back in the 70s, those Saturday morning Sid and Marty Croft TV show theme songs were super memorable and tons of fun. Think about it, you've got classics like H.R. Puffin Stuff, Lidsville, The Bugaloos, and Land of the Lost. All of those theme songs did a great job of informing a first-time viewer what the show was all about. And right up there with those classics is the theme song to Electra Woman and Dyna Girl. It's just this little earworm that once you hear it, you'll be humming it all day whether you want to or not. And the strange thing about this song is that for over four decades, no one knew who sang the darn thing. If you do a Google search, you're likely to find some sort of reference to Cindy Lauper singing the song. Yep, the girl who just wanted to have fun. But is that possible? Is she the singer of this classic TV theme song? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Let's start with the yes part. You see, Cindy has performed the song live. But as far as I know, it was a one-time gig at an event honoring Sid and Marty in 2009. There was a period of time where I thought that the singer was Marie Osmond. In 1976, Marie, along with her brother, were experiencing a wave of success on television with their weekly variety show, which was produced by, you guessed it, Sid and Marty Croft. And I was thinking that it was likely that the song for Electra Woman and Dinah Girl had actually been recorded around the end of 1975 or the beginning of 76, right around the same time that Donnie Marie's relationship with Sid and Marty was really starting to bloom. And we know that Sid and Marty Croft were also employing the Osmond brothers to write and perform the music that would be acted out on stage by a group of actors known as Captain Cool and the Kongs. And among the members of that group was actress Deborah Klinger, second from the right in this photo, who played a character named Super Chick. And it is from Deborah that we finally know that it wasn't Marie at all, because it was her. In one of the more recent episodes of the Pop Culture Retro Podcast, which is hosted by Jonathan Rosen and Ike Eisenman, they had Deborah on as a guest and she confirmed what I had already known about the Osmond Brothers' involvement with the Croft Super Show, but she also revealed that in addition to writing all of the songs for Captain Cool and the Kongs during the first season of the Croft Super Show, they also wrote and performed the memorable theme songs for shows like Wonderbug, Magic Mongo, and Dr. Shrinker. And it was during this part of the conversation with Jonathan and Ike that Deborah revealed that she had been the singer on Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. After all, Deborah and her sisters had been close friends with the Osmond family since the early 60s when they had had the same singing coach in Salt Lake City, Utah. The girls even performed with the Osmonds on The Andy Williams Show before getting their own gig on Danny Kaye's variety show. You know, that podcast episode with Deborah is pretty darn awesome. She also talks quite a bit about the cult favorite movie, Midnight Madness, that she starred in with David Naughton and Michael J. Fox. Five diametrically opposed teams of college students are challenged to compete in a grueling all-night game. Midnight Madness. It's about winning and losing. The game that demands sophisticated strategies. Four flat tires. Harold, you beached whale. Are we losing our temper? It's about girls. David Norton. Stephen First. Well, Eddie Deason. Deborah Klinger. I thought you'd never ask. Dirk Blocker. Experience Midnight Madness for the most fun you can legally have in the dark. 
I'll post a link to the interview in the description section of this video. Sadly, she didn't talk at all about her short-lived CBS television series, American Girls, that she starred in with a pre-3's company, Priscilla Barnes. Oh well, I guess that just means they'll have to have her back on their podcast again for another revealing conversation down the road. For now, I think we should all just celebrate that a decades-long mystery has finally been solved. Thanks to Deborah Klinger and Jonathan and Ike, of course. Those guys are the best. One more thing before I wrap this video up. During the early 70s, Deborah was part of a musical group called The Rock Flowers that had their very own line of dolls for young girls. Check out this vintage commercial with a very recognizable narrator and a very fake Brady girl. Now Mattel announces the new Rock Flowers. Heather, Rosemary, Lilac. Three out of sight fashion dolls. Each rock flower has a real record of her own rock music, a wild rock costume, and a posing stand so she can twirl on any short spindle record player. The rock flowers. You can dress and pose them like beautiful fashion dolls when you buy these exciting now fashions. Or you can play that they're famous rock singers performing for you and your friends. Get Heather or Rosemary or Lilac. The new rock flowers. Each comes with her own rock costume, posing stand, and record. Dolls and other costumes sold separately. All right, now it's your turn. What was your favorite Saturday morning show theme song? Let me know in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Oh, wait, I almost forgot to thank my channel members as well. These folks, well, they've gone above and beyond and have become either super fans or super friends of the channel, some of them for well over two years. They all have my appreciation. Thanks, folks. You are the best. What? You, you're still here? <laughs> How about one more vintage commercial? Double dating, double jumping, double creature in a double feature. But the single most favorite double in the world is double good, double good, double mint gum. Double your pleasure with double mint gum. Double good, double fresh, double delicious. There's no single gum like it.